On today's show, when you say houseboating in Minnesota, you might mean houseboating with the Doherty family. They're on beautiful Rainy Lake, and they're still afloat. And you might think of Waterville, Minnesota as the bullhead capital, but there's a state park there that'll get you thinking of camping and nature. And later, the life and times of a Minnesota couple who may have the perfect job if you like living on an island surrounded by biting fish. Oh, lost them. Our Minnesota Bound Classic this week is one of my favorites for many reasons. Fishing is one, and fishing with my brothers is the other. <laughs> Those stories and more next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. How about the perfect vacation in Minnesota? Well here's one idea, a houseboat trip. And if you're going to do that, you ought to know about the original houseboating family in Minnesota, the Doherty's on Rainy Lake. When you say houseboating in Minnesota, you probably mean houseboating with the Doherty family. The Doherty family business is in its fifth generation, and their tourism roots go back even further. My great-great-grandfather bought the Kettle Falls Hotel in 1918, $1,000 and four barrels of whiskey. Uh, and then it went from there to uh, Blanche and Charlie Williams. And then myself and my brothers and my parents, we used to spend the summers there uh, helping out, uh, running the resort. Yep, we grew up there and, you know, Tom's seven years younger than I am, but he did get to come in on the tail end because my grandfather sold the hotel to the Voyagers National Park in 1977. But it wasn't long after that the Doherty family found themselves taking over a houseboat business on Rainy Lake. And in 1978, my parents decided to move from Hoyt Lakes and come here and, and as general managers of Rainy Lake Houseboats, acquiring ownership with each year's service, and then ended up buying their partner out. The rest, as they say, is history, or in the Doherty's case, a family history. Parents, Bill and June, along with siblings Billy, Charlie, and Tom, have been in the family houseboat business ever since. When we got here, we had, I believe, 12 boats. Uh, and then in, in a, a short period of time, we turned those over, sold them, bought new ones. And uh, today, we're up to 29. And operating the houseboat business, as it turns out, is a lot like running a family farm. Well, my dad always referred to it as farming. And, and uh, the cows would come in off the lake, and. We had to feed them and wash them and get them all cleaned up and then you sent them back out to pasture. Farming or houseboating, the kids start young. Well, they've always let us have a hands-on right from the beginning, even at you know an early age. Uh, you know, I was 15, 16 years old. I was you know taking a supervisory role. I've been guiding for 45 years. I started out as a nine-year-old at the Kettle Falls Hotel. <laughs> Do you remember what you caught that first trip? Yes, we caught seven walleyes in the Pipestone River. There you go. Yeah. That's pretty good for a nine-year-old. Yeah. Five bucks a day. <laughs> All right, game on. No casting, Denise, no casting. It's still zero to zero. It's a little heavy. All right. Woo! Woo! Ah, this is painful. But when Billy's your guide, luck can change fast. There we go. What do you got there? I don't know. I got myself one here. All right, here we go. Oh, that's a nice one. Need the net, Billy? Yeah, he's not going to be, won't be swinging this one over the side. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice one. That's a beauty, Billy. Oh. It's easy to understand why the Doherty's have such loyal clients. In fact, 
Some of the friends they've had over the years might sound a tad familiar. Uh, Bud Grant has been here. Jesse was one of the true participants in the governor's fishing owner. He enjoyed it. So what's ahead for the next generation of houseboat entrepreneurs? You know, Tom and I aren't tired. I mean, we're, we're not that old yet, so we'd love to go, you know, hit that 2018, which would be 100 years of family business on Rainy Lake. Yes, a century on Rainy Lake, where the joy of houseboating and fishing never gets old for the Doherty family. Coming up, a visit to a state park that chances are you've never heard about, but you'll want to visit. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers. Renewal by Anderson. Seven Clans Casino. Connecticut. And by Rapala. Put more into your summer with the 2013 GMC Sierra. And now get a Sierra with more standard features like Stabilitrack, Eaton Rear Locking Differential, and six months of OnStar Directions and Connections. More confidence with America's best pickup coverage, including two years of scheduled maintenance. And more value with up to 8500 for current GMC owners who trade up to Sierra Powertech. The only thing there won't be more of are 2013 GMC Sierras. Once they're gone, they're gone. Welcome back. You know, another great place to go if you're looking for adventure in Minnesota is one of our many state parks. There are beautiful gems, as we like to say, and here's a story about one of them called Sakata State Park. Bill Shirk has a story. Not all fishy destinations have to be way up north. Case in point, this lake, Sakata a southern Minnesota gem. The whole side of the lake is just wild. It's a tall state park. Sakata sits on the edge of downtown Waterville, a place I like to think of as Minnesota's forgotten vacation spot. I can stop the world if I want. The guy sitting in the front window won't disagree. Makes sense. Axel's bait shop is owned by a guy named, of course, Pete. A lot of people are coming with a long face. It's my job to put a smile on their face. Axel's ain't your average bait shop. It's the only one that has a uh, minnow man and a uh, artist in the same building. Over in the corner, wife Arena documents life on canvas just another feather in this vacation town's cap. A lot of fishing, bike trail right outside of town here, hiking in the park. Ah uh, yes, the park. It hides just a mile from downtown. Cicada, which literally translates to the sights and sounds of children playing on the hill. Drive around with park manager Dennis Reindahl and you quickly realize Cicada might also mean hidden or off the beaten path. It's our favorite. It's quiet and really lots of trees around. We like the outdoor feel of it. We prefer state parks. It just feels good to be here. Mm -hmm. And the bike trail is really good. Ah, yes. <gasps> the bike trail. Cool. So here's the other really cool part of the state park. It's the Sakata State Trail, a bike trail, a really long trail. Come on, let's go. I bet better than half the campers that come in have a bike with them when they're in here camping. The Sakata State Singing Hills Trail runs 40 wild miles across southern Minnesota. Out here, you hear nothing but the singing hills, Sakata. It seems the Dakota people long ago got this area's name just right. It gives people a, a way to get out and get in touch with nature. 
Up next, you'll meet a Minnesota couple who may have the perfect summer job as they go island bound. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Yard, premier manufacturers of maintenance free outdoor patio furniture and accessories from recycled plastic. Maintenance-free furniture. Comfort, elegance, and recycling combined. Call today for your free catalog or go online to buytheyard.net. Now, if you're looking for the perfect job outdoors, I have one, or at least I know a couple that has one. You're going to find out how they spend their summers. I know it's a little heavy. When you pack up and hit the road of life, who knows where it leads? That uh, just about does it. We're loaded. Closing the door, leaving home, leaving town, and tooling north of the border for the sweetest of all destinations. If it's your own Canada fishing camp. I'm used to it after 40 years. You know, it's been in the family since 1955, so it's been a little longer than that. I've been to Canada, you know, just about all my life. For Gloria and Richard Castle, their sweet destination every spring is a place called KCR Camp near Kenora, Ontario. It sounds glamorous, if you don't mind picking up things and hauling stuff while your guests, well, they go fishing. Maybe I get out once, twice, something like that. I think last year I got out the most time that I've uh, been out in any one year, and that was only about four or five times, and I thought that was really good. But Richard and Gloria wouldn't change a thing, not after 40 years of something called good service. Richard and Gloria take good care of us, and it's been a lot of fun. We always look forward to it. I couldn't wait till I bring my son, and now he's made four trips with me too. I always caught fish, always had fun. Good or bad days, they all start early for the castles. Oh, we get up at 5.30 and get coffee made right away, because <laughs> everybody wants coffee by six o'clock. Coffee, and then I start frying bacon or sausage, whatever meat we have. After breakfast, then I start making desserts, salads, getting everything ready for the evening meal. And after that, I run the store till 9.30 every night. We help one another. You know, I'm in the kitchen sometimes, and of course, she's down pumping gas sometimes. It's a family business, and uh, we do it all. Oh, by the way, did you know the camp is isolated on an island? We come in April, and then I get off here in October. I'm here for all that time. Everybody says, how can you stand it without shopping? But I do my shopping in the winter. After the castles do their duties, the scenic beauty of the lake, the boats, and guides, and the fishing do the rest. Great place. Always seems to be having pleasant weather. A little windy today. But a little weather never stopped the hungry pike. Nice size. Pretty fish. About 32 inches. There he goes. Let's get another one out of here. Well, we got 16 walleyes. We had several that we didn't catch, but we ended up catching 16. I think we kept six or seven. The biggest was 26 inches. Tons of fish, walleyes, northern, maybe a few smallmouth out there. I think it's great fishing. Good fishing and good eating. Nothing beats a fresh fish shoreline. Nothing. There's only one problem when you come to one of these perfect fishing places. Soon the fishing ends, the boats are tied, and 
the guests must depart back to reality. But not Richard and Gloria. They're island bound for six months a year. Six months of working in Camelot. You can't ask for a better life, you might say. Golden walleye. Still ahead, fishing may be one of my favorite things to do, but when you combine fishing with my brothers, well, now you're talking. <laughs> Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Hennepin County Medical Center. Minnesota Agricultural Water Resources Coalition. Minnesota Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. You know, getting injured while enjoying the great outdoors is never a good thing. But if you think about it, we're lucky too. That's because Minnesota is home to Hennepin County Medical Center. HCMC is a level one trauma center with nationally recognized specialty care. They teach and train thousands of healthcare providers and first responders every year. HCMC shares our passion for the outdoors and has put together a website filled with safety tips ranging from frostbite to sunburn. HCMC experts are at your fingertips. Right, Raven? As you might know, I have several brothers who all like to fish. And when we get together, it's quite an adventure, especially when you go on a fly-in trip with Eddie Showalter. But once you're there, oh my, the pressure. You ready to go catch some walleyes, boys? Notice I'm doing all the carrying. <laughs> Bush pilot Eddie Showalter has never had a plane load of fishermen quite like this one. <laughs> After a short flight to Eddie's outpost camp on Ontario's Hammerhead Lake, the unusual load deplanes. Watch your step, gang. <laughs> gang is a good word. This is the Shara gang. Three brothers and one wannabe. I take it. Starting with the oldest, there's me, then brother Robert, then brother Rick. Another brother, Roger, couldn't make the trip. And this is Steve, Steve Hurth. He's a good friend, and he wishes he was a brother. We've well, that. sort of. We've gathered at Eddie's Hammerhead Outpost Camp. Uh, you got full beds in here. You got lots of wood down there for the stove. To scratch an intense family itch. Fishing, fishing, fishing. There he is. You watch pretty soon. These two brothers are going to yell, fish on. It's, it's, it's. It's unspoken. There's a lot of competition right now. Oh, lost him. Had him on and lost him. You don't know pressure until you fish with the Shara brothers. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we're after. Golden walleye. <laughs> and I'm the first brother to get one. That's what even makes it better. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this one just to prove it. Ricky! He's got one on the stringer. Good job! You got one? You need a net? That's a nice one. What did we bring those other two guys along for? There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shore lunch, shore lunch. You gotta know how, Robert. It takes a share to show them how to fish. Who, me? <laughs> well, show me that. Every dog has his day. Of course, it's even sweeter when the dog happens to be a brother. <laughs> yeah. You see, the Sheras have a family secret. We all have the same middle name, Tease. <laughs> it's the camaraderie, and we always we always tease each other. We were always being teased by our uncles and stuff. Oh. <laughs> we laugh about it, and it's we do some stupid stuff, but it's always it's always a lot of fun. I think the the, the share of fishing goes back to our father and our mother, who took us on the Mississippi River fishing taught us a lot about fishing, patience in fishing, and, and I also think they gave us some of our humor, too. I like fishing with my brothers. It's always interesting because, well, we go back for so long, you know. We've had so many experiences together. 
family, etc. That all of the old stories get retold, embellished a little bit, but the laughs are still there, and so you relive a lot of that. More fish. Who's the best fisherman? Hey, you're looking at him. <laughs> So that's the way it goes when the Sheriff brothers gather to go fishing. All right. They fish a bunch. There we go. There's what we came for. There, Steve got one. Nice walleye. <laughs> and laugh a lot. <laughs> I think it's a walleye. Little fella. <laughs> <laughs> Both our parents are gone now, but the thing that they planted with us in fishing, fishing together as a family, we still do, and uh, that's kind of nice to know that that tradition that my parents started so many years ago still goes on. <laughs> well, if you're watching, I think I caught most of the fish, um, but then I also had the editing done right, right? Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Chera, and as always, the star of the show is Raven. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.